Consumer surplus is calculated as the difference between how much a consumer is willing to pay for something and the actual price of that item. For total consumer surplus, it can be calculated as an area. If you are drawing a demand curve as a step diagram, each individual's consumer surplus, the area below a consumer's willingness to pay and above the market price, is also the area of a rectangle. Total consumer surplus is the sum of all individual consumer surpluses, so it is the total area below the market demand curve and above the market price. The area of a rectangle is its base multiplied by its height. Suppose we map out the demand for coffee for six individuals who are all willing to pay different amounts for a cup of coffee, ranging from $4 to 25 cents. If the price of a cup of coffee is $2, we can calculate each individual's consumer surplus and then add them up to calculate the total consumer surplus. The base of Andrea's step is the additional number of cups she adds to the market, one. The height of her step is her willingness to pay, $4, minus the market price, $2. Andrea's consumer surplus is thus the base of her step times the height of her step, $2. We can do this for each of the other consumers who are participating in this market. For Brett, the base of his step is also one. The height of his step is one because he's willing to pay $3 but only has to pay $2. Brett's consumer surplus is $1. For Christy, her consumer surplus is 50 cents times one, which is equal to 50 cents. Deb, Eddie, and Frank do not participate in this market because their maximum willingness to pay is less than the market price. At this time, they are not included in the calculation of consumer surplus. Adding up the area of each rectangle gives us total consumer surplus, $2 plus $1 plus 50 cents for a total of $3.50. The demand curve can be drawn as a step diagram for a scenario involving only a few potential consumers in a market. But with a large enough market, those individual steps will smooth out and we will have a demand curve that is a downward sloping line. Smoothing out data is done to show key patterns in data without zeroing in on fine details. The coffee market in the United States is a very large market with a large number of consumers. It is estimated that half of the U.S. population, around 150 million people, drink coffee. Americans consume 400 million cups of coffee per day, with an average price in a coffee shop of $2.38 per cup. With a smoothed out demand curve because of the size of the market, the consumer surplus, which is the area below the demand curve and above the market price, is now the area of a triangle. More specifically, it is a right triangle because two of the sides, the axes, form a right angle. The area of a right triangle is one half times the base times the height. The base of the triangle is 400 million and the height of the triangle is $8. In this example, the demand curve crosses the price axis at $10.38 and the price line is at $2.38. So the height is $10.38 minus $2.38 for a total of $8. The total consumer surplus in this example is $1.6 billion. We arrive at that by calculating the triangle as one half times the base of 400 million times the height of $8, which is equal to $1.6 billion per day.